guess it was a pretty crash and bash session out there today. Do you kind of encourage the guys this time of year to treat it like a game? Yeah, look, we each week with our main session we'll have elements of it where it's full competition, full noise, we call it, and yeah, that, the expectation is that as we treat it like a game. Obviously, there's certain contests where we don't you know, battle through our, our teammates, but that element of treating it like a contested ball on game day is really important to get the guys' heads in the right place and then also practice what we need to going into each week. So, um, yeah, we're still largely in pre-season mode to a large degree, so it's still, we know, our sights are set on round one, so it's important that every chance we get to compete, we... We nail it, uh, and today was a, a good step in that direction as well. Has there been anything you've been looking to rectify this week after the Port Adelaide game? Yeah, like each week we do review a game, and there's things out of last week that we want to tinker with for this week and moving forward, and slight alterations we've made in, in our game plan that we want to make adjustments to, which we've spoken through already. So a bit of that today was adjustments um, and also focusing on what we know we've, we've done really well for a long period of time. How much of that was on stoppage? Yeah, a little bit on it today. Um, we obviously got scored against on stoppage on the weekend, um, which again is a clear event for us for, for this year with, with one hit out. So a couple of slight tinkerings going into this week and a reminder of positioning and roles that we've made some adjustments to and uh, we're confident that that'll correct itself pretty quickly. Yeah, so you feel like that's something you can fix pretty easily, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, coming from the yeah. Friday night game. Yep, stoppage, scores from stoppage are generally a lot quicker and easier to fix than it is from a, you know, scores from intercept. So we're, um, yeah, we've, we've noted there's a couple of clear, I guess, uh, instances on the weekend where we could have been in better position or uh, rectified our system to make ourselves harder to score against. So, yep, that's an easy fix for us, we believe, moving forward. How's Saligo looking as well, obviously, tracking pretty well. Um, Mixie said he's probably going to play against West Coast. Yeah, it's looking like Solly's going to get some minutes uh, in the first... Uh, first, I guess, first game. Well, sorry, it's not a game this week. In our um, AFL game this week, so he's going to get, um, yeah, a good look at it for us, which will um, be great because he had an outstanding summer up until he twisted his ankle. So he's looked sharp. Uh, he obviously trained today, and hopefully he gets through and pulls up okay. Um, but if he does, he'll be getting some minutes with the AFL team to press his case for round one. How about Junior and Butsy? How about junior and yeah, similar, similar again. So they've had three weeks of solid training now, which preps them for some minutes this weekend. So they're two that we need to, to look at and get some minutes into for for round one prep. Just on Salego, where does he fit in the midfield mix? He's been thrown around a fair bit. Yeah, he's one that he he fits everywhere, which is uh, why we love him. He's able to play ahead of the ball as a as a high forward. He can play inside stoppage as a forward or a midfielder. And he's a more than competent winger for us as well. So um, we haven't pigeonholed Jake into one specific role. Um, what, what, what I've been so impressed about from his footy since he walked in the doors is that he can play those multiple roles. Um, a bit like Dorse, he's not afraid to be rolled around in game, whereas some players prefer to just stick to just play me wing and, and, and keep me there. Um, Jake's flexible mindset and ability to play those multiple roles is, is really important for us. We saw at the back end of last year he played predominantly wing for us and at different stages he played more time on ball. So where we can, we will. Um, but this week it's more than likely he'll play some wing minutes and on ball. So he's got centre square qualities though? Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah, he's, um, he's played in the centre bounce before. I like what he gives us in and around there. So he, uh, he certainly will be exposed to some centre bounce again this year. I guess as a midfield coach, how's it been having rank? It looks like the plan is to have rank and more centre bounces this year. I mean. From your perspective, what does that bring you? Yeah, look, it gives us a different dynamic around the footy um, and some quick legs to get onto that loose ball when it hits the ground. So, you, I mean, there's some clear examples in the third quarter on the weekend where Isaac showed his wares in and around the centre bounce, um, and we've seen that throughout summer as well. So we like what we see. Um, Scotty Burns, the forward coach, is always trying to pull him back forward, and I'm trying to get him up around the footy. So we'll have a constant battle throughout the year. Um, that's what you get when you get guys like Isaac in your footy club that can play a number of different roles and impacts, I guess, wherever they go. So we'll try and find that balance with him. What is that? How do you find the balance with the other guys? It looks like from most of the preseason, it's Dawes, Laird, Crouch as your kind of three first choice midfielders at centre bounces. I mean, do you move one of them around? Like, obviously, Dawes is showing versatility, but you yeah. there. Do you move Laird then? You know, like that kind of thing. How do you kind of balance that out? Yeah, we. 
We value guys with versatility in the team um, and there wouldn't be many at all that can't play dual positions. So I reckon it's, it's definitely a, a key pillar of how we move forward in, in the modern game is that players need to play, like I said with Jake Saligo, forward wing on ball and the more players that we get that can do that, we are able to get different looks in and around the footy, different looks ahead of the ball um, and, and keep guys involved in the game more so because uh, we haven't got guys off half back that can play um, significant wing minutes for us as well. So Hingy, Junior, um, Smith, Hamill, Nankervis, these guys can all play wing for us as well. So we're trying to build that versatility so that we do get different looks and that guys get different opportunities to play different roles at AFL level. We know that Dawson, you know, he can play down back. He can almost he can play probably anywhere. Yeah. But I mean, Krauss has probably been more of a centre square midfielder in his time and led now in the after being a half back. Where do you see kind of their Crouch and Laird's versatility then if you're looking to expand that? Yeah, look, they're, they're more or less our genuine on-ballers. Um, Leddy has played across half forward at times. Um, we've done that in the past when he's got some, some close attention and he may well spend some stints ahead of the ball at different stages if we're exposing Isaac like we have been doing. Um, so the mids are really clear in understanding why that's happening and, and how that complements our system and how we, we balance out our look around the footy. So. Um, they're all on board with that. What do you like about Laddie in maybe ahead of the ball a little bit? Oh, look, he, he finds the footy wherever he goes. As a defender, he was all Australian defender and I'm not sure for his defensive uh, capability, but he was able to generate and find a lot of the footy behind the ball. He obviously does that as a midfielder week in, week out. So uh, some guys just have an innate ability to find the footy and he's one of those guys, as is Crouchy, that... Uh, can find the footy and it's it's hard to teach um, and that's what we love about those guys they they consistently win their own share of footy. And how's Harry Schoenberg looking as well? He looked like he was yep. doing more today than he has been doing for a decent amount of time. Yeah Harry uh, and you probably throw Nick Murray into that mix as well they've been progressing really well out of rehab and you know I think each week for the last couple of months the, the rehab staff have been singing their praises about their development, their growth, their rehab, and um, you know Nick and Harry are now progressing into different drills at training. They're still not into the full um, competing drills, but that'll come in the next period of time. The time frame, I'm not exactly sure, but I know they're on track and done everything they possibly can. So um, the uh, the rehab staff are, are wrapped with how they've been going about it. Dan Curtin, obviously with his uh, ingrown toenail miss yep. today, not exactly like it's a long-term one, but given his knee injuries and the pre-season he's had, how much you sort of have to manage expectations around him, obviously coming in as a, as a high draft pick? Oh, look, it's about yeah, ingrown toenails. I don't know if you've had one. They're bloody sore. So oh, hopefully that settles down for him sooner rather than later. Um, but we've been really impressed with Dan from the day he stepped through the door. Um, same with Oscar and Charlie as our draft D boys coming in learning a whole new game style, showing why we drafted them. Uh, we saw last week, you know, Dan showed enough to say, hey, this is why um, we value him so highly. And uh, moving forward, as we were with the other two that I mentioned, we will, we will balance their years to make sure that they can give us hopefully a consistent run of footy. And whether that be at AFL, SNFL level, uh, will be dictated to by opportunity, performance, availability. Um, and Dan's no different to, to the rest of our squad, but. Um, we've really liked what we've seen from him. Charlie's probably the one who's been who's more of a midfielder out of the three. I mean, what have you kind of made of him? He looks like a potentially a big body midfielder. Yeah. You know, Manny Dawson at the internal trial. Yeah, look, um, Charlie only started playing inside as a mid the back end of last year at, at um, NAB League as well. So we're really excited by what his growth looks like. Um, and he's just learning every week. He comes in the office and he just keeps adding areas to his game and um, liked what I saw from him on the weekend too. So yeah, that big bodied mid, um, able to win the inside and he's got some running capability on the outside too. So uh, I'm excited to see where his game grows to over the, the, I guess this year and beyond. I'm not sure if you saw Graeme Corns' comments the other day. He said that he thought that there was a, a lack of big body midfielders at the Crows. I think Laddie responded to that, pointing out Jordan Dawson as, as one that is versatile and, and big bodied. How do you respond to that? Oh. If I need to, um, yeah, no, we're we're more than happy with our mix around the footy. We've got, um, yeah, good balance of big bodies, uh, some quick feet guys, and uh, we like our mix. And that's all that matters. Oh, sorry, is it the best depth of mids that you've had since you've come back? 
Oh, variety. Yeah, it's definitely we've we've we're starting to add yeah different mix of guys around the footy uh, while keeping the likes of you know Lady and Crouch giving us that that um, contested balance. Um, but you mentioned Dawson, Saligo, Rankin, Rochelle, Pedler at different stages. Um, you know, our younger guys that are coming through as well. I think it's it's um, it's exciting. We've still got a lot of growth to go in that regard. Um, so we'll have some ebbs and flows with those young guys in particular, and the guys that are learning their craft as a forward coming up. But um, yeah, it's been part of the the bigger picture, and it will remain that way that we're trying to get as many guys through there um, without compromising. I guess our system. How, what does having that versatility, let's say unpredictability as well, what does that kind of do for you? Like, do for a midfield where you can just throw guys in there, your team, maybe opposition teams can't get settled at stoppages, you know, about who's going in there kind of thing. Yeah, yeah it's a bit about um, some unsettlement for the opposition, but it's also um, around, I guess, being able to put guys in around the footy based on what the game's telling at any stage. So if we're, if we're getting beaten on the outside, we've got guys that can play in and out, so we can put those guys around the footy. If we need a bit of a spark with some leg speed, we've got guys ahead of the ball that can come up and give us a chop out in that regard. So if we're getting beaten purely on contested footy, we've got guys that can just hey get us around the ball and do what you do best. So um, it's a bit around what the game presents. Um, and, yeah, we, we obviously roll... Um, I guess go through there based on on that.